Hey everybody, how you doing? It's uh, Uncle Bruce here live uh, from Amsterdam. I'm crossing my fingers and I'm hoping that this link is working. A uh, bunch of folks are apparently here. Uh, hoping you're getting this signal and hopefully you are all catching the show live from wherever you are around the world. I think it's working. We got 54 now climbing in here and the number is quickly accelerating. Welcome one and all to the show. It is 8.30 Eastern time in New York. Um, it is uh, here in Amsterdam now, 2.30 in the afternoon on a beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous day here. Uh, welcome one, welcome all to the live telecast as we try to follow the stock markets in plain English um, as to, uh, to sort of follow what's, what's happening. I'll tell you, um, about 45 minutes ago, an hour ago, all was well. Everything was calm. Uh, looked like we had a little down dip of a day going. Nothing too serious. Um, I figured it would be a nothing burger. Uh, then our friends at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods came out and um, they did the right thing. Uh, they notified their shareholders by way of a public uh, news release prior to the market opening. Um, they have revised their sales estimates, their their projections for the upcoming quarter. Um, this is what public companies are supposed to do. They are supposed to let their shareholders in on good or bad news, just where things are at. And uh, what they did was um, revised downward their projected uh, sales, their projected revenues, and their projected uh, uh, net profits. Um, uh, this caused the shares of Dick's Sporting Goods to take a fall. Uh, they closed last night at 71.24. That was last night's closing trade. On the day yesterday, Dick's Sporting Goods shares lost $4 a share from that 75 range to the 71 range. Now, this morning, when this uh, announcement was made, the shares promptly took another dip uh, right down to about $57 a share. They are right now partially recovered a bit here to 63.40 but they are off seven dollars 80 cents right now as i'm speaking to you down about 11 percent and uh 1.2 million traded in the pre-market which i'm sure is quite high for this uh, company they rarely will trade these kinds of numbers in the pre-market and also uh, going forward um we'll see when we get closer to the opening whether the shares will come get any better or will they go back down again and hit another low. This is just like the other day when Snap came out and they too came up with a revision of earnings uh, and estimated sales and everything else uh, to let their shareholders in on the fact that, hey, things are changing so fast, so quickly that our recent projections from a month ago, six weeks ago, are no longer accurate. <laughs> They're no longer accurate. We're not waiting uh, for another nine weeks until the end of the quarter to then shock you with the real numbers. We're not going to do that. We're going to come out right now and warn you with a earnings warning, a, a sales warning, a net profit warning. We're going to give you an, a, a new adjusted earnings per share number being proactive rather than reactive because this market does not like nasty surprises when companies reveal their numbers um, for their their latest quarter knowing for weeks they knew about it N knowing you know we knew that you know when, when a public company re releases results today from their final for their recent quarterly earnings those those are done six weeks ago we they knew how bad it was and they didn't tell anybody we don't like that shareholders don't go for that so preemptive press releases and and updates is the norm and that's what we expect so dick's sporting goods 63 bucks a share taking it took the market with it when this came out the entire stock market went oh geez if, if dick's sporting goods is having trouble what about all the suppliers to dick's sporting goods uh all the companies that deal with dick's sporting goods that sell them stuff they're not selling them as much stuff because if they're not moving as much stuff out the door they don't need as much coming in the back door, huh? Uh, think about that. Dick's Sporting Goods isn't a single sporting store in Salt Lake City. Uh, they're na national. This is a big, 
big issue from coast to coast. And so now another analysis has to be done by stock analysts, uh, by retail analysts and market uh, pundits to ask themselves, gee, um, if Dix is having problems and um, other retailers are having issues, how far and how deep is this spreading out? And is this a sign of a pending recession coming? Are we already in a recession? We don't have the stats to prove it yet because it hasn't been two consecutive three-month quarters of reduced growth. But are we seeing already the kind of uh, the kind of information that we need to see that confirms to us our suspicions are right? Uh, we're noticing much higher prices at our local grocery stores for services that we need done. Our favorite, you know, fast food restaurants are raising their prices. We're noticing maybe we're talking to friends, relatives, children, moms, dads, whatever who who know of or are working in various retail sectors, whether it's fast food, hotels, uh, clothing stores, shopping mall, sent wherever. And we're getting these reports from all kinds of places saying, oh, yeah, things have really backed off or business is way down or traffic is way down. And the average the average ticket size is backed off or um, menu items on on in restaurants. They're not they're not ordering the high end stuff. They're ordering the cheaper stuff. I mean, this is all we need to know. This is all we want to hear. This is all we have to know to understand how it's affecting the lower middle class, the middle class uh, right here, right now. And that's the majority of America, Canada, the UK and Europe and everywhere else. We are the backbone of the economy. And if we back off our purchases or we modify our purchases, then we can extrapolate that into how it's going to affect the economy as a whole. The Dow right now is down 129. I'm not trying to uh, have you worry that the market is in a real free fall. It's not like that at all. We're off 130 points on the Dow. We gained 600 on Monday. We gained 40 yesterday after being down 500 plus points during the day. Uh, down 130 right now. It's a nothing burger. It's 0.4%, not even a half percentage point. S&P is down 0.4 of 1%, down 17 points, nothing burger. Um, the NASDAQ, which has been red yesterday, um, is down 64 points. That's not even, it's barely half a percentage point. So we don't have a massive sell-off happening here, but we are getting more indications of um, possible slowdowns and possible segments. And it makes sense to me that Dick Sporting Goods would warn about spending because dick's sporting goods does not sell milk bread butter or eggs dick's sporting goods sells casual wear uh runner sneakers uh hiking gear uh golf uh, gear uh you you know what i'm talking about it it is not the core of spending that we need for a refrigerator in our kitchen or to keep a roof over our heads. This is discretionary spending that the middle class and higher will go into. If you are really poor and you're on a strict budget, you're not even going to a Dick Sporting Goods. You're not going anywhere near a Dick Sporting Goods. You can't afford it. If you're in the middle class, upper middle class or higher, yes, you will frequent Dick Sporting Goods and you will take a look at the high-end Nike shoes or the Adidas or whatever brand you like. You'll look for outerwear. You'll look for camping gear, hiking gear. Yes, of course, golfing uh, golfing equipment, boating, uh, snorkeling, all the, all the pleasurable pursuits that we like to do. But this is discretionary spending at a upper middle class level and higher. And right now, the middle class is asking itself, Am I um, being a little too loosey-goosey with my money if I go into Dick's Sporting Goods rather than go into my grocery store? Shouldn't I concentrate on my freezer being full of the good stuff, food? Uh, should I be on top of my bills right now? How am I doing with my income coming in? How's the job? How's that? You know, we're, how are we doing? Because 
interest rates are going up. Some of you have a mortgage coming due this year. Uh, your mortgage uh, was a three-year term, five-year term. You're coming up to renegotiating your mortgages this year. Some of you might be in for a bit of a surprise, a shocking surprise, in that the interest rate you used to pay on your mortgage versus the interest rate now being proposed to you by your lender might be a, a shocker. It might be, hey, I didn't expect it to be this expensive. There's that. And of course, that is close to home, which is it is home. And so um, people are going to naturally be careful. And so we'll, we'll see what gives. So we're off 167 on the Dow, 22 on S&P, uh, 82 on the NASDAQ. We'll see how this affects our opening this morning. Um, the crude oil price up 128 uh, per barrel in West Texas. We're at 111.05. So far, kind of calm there. This morning, Jennifer and I went for uh, a little outing from the hotel into Old Town Amsterdam, into classic, the Amsterdam that you see when you see YouTube videos and anything like that of any other travelers, the classic area. We went into an area where there was a lot of hostels. <laughs> so we ended up in an area of uh, Amsterdam where the younger the younger crowd is the the backpackers where they hang out, and um, I found it incredibly interesting as I always do. Um, I note the, that we en ended up going into a, a a little restaurant in there that had um, they serve crepes and waffles, and I specifically had a hankering for a, a crepe type of a breakfast today, and I wanted to do something in a classic downtown. Old Town Amsterdam area, so we went over there and uh, we found uh, all of these cannabis stores and souvenir shops and the t-shirt sellers and the shot glass merchants and we saw some pubs and uh, obviously we saw it all uh, from A to Z and a couple of things I realized, um, a couple of things that just kind of hit me. Uh, right between the eyes, because I'm still not used to this. Um, I keep thinking of myself as a young person. I don't consider myself an ancient old man. But Jen and I are ancient. Uh, when we were down there today, we were clearly the oldest people in the room uh, for blocks and blocks and blocks of area. We were the old folks. And with Jen walking with her walking stick and with me holding her and having my arm out so she can put her hand over my arm for stability, we, we looked the part of two seniors. And uh, I'm pretty sure that a lot of those young kids over there were looking at us going by and saying to themselves, those guys look like our grandparents. Um, I don't even think the backpackers in their 20s were looking at us like those are our parents. We are older looking than their parents are because i'm a i'm assuming that if if you're a 20 something year old backpacker in amsterdam your mom and dad are in their 40s maybe their late early 50s we're in our mid 60s we are another generation removed which is kind of cool because you get treated very nicely by these kids uh, these uh, the the entrepreneurs in the stores and the customers of these of these uh, entrepreneurs they're very kind to us. Uh, they're very, uh, they're very, um, um, uh, how, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know if they're shocked to see us, but they're pleasantly surprised to see uh, us, Jennifer and I, of our generation being there. Um, I look at it like it's the first time I've ever, been, I've ever been here. I've always wanted to come here for decades. I've wanted to be here somehow, some way. Uh, just have not been able to afford it or the timing just wasn't right or because Jennifer and I had our daughter when we were 32 it was when we had our child not when we were 22 that delayed the getaway for the empty nesters that we became and all this uh, it's just life it's just like nothing personal it's just life so here we are at this age walking these cobblestone streets of Amsterdam and uh getting a real kick out of it um the one the one restaurant we were in where we were having a bite to eat there was music playing uh on the speaker system 
and it was very pleasant. I rather enjoyed it. And um, uh, I think I was talking to the young guy who sort of manages the place. And I said, this music that we're listening to, is this, is this your music? Is it sort of from your personal collection? And he said, yes, it is. It's, uh, it's music that I have on my uh, device. And I said, uh, were you just playing some Moby? Were you playing Moby just a few minutes ago? He said, yes, I was. He couldn't believe that I knew it was Moby uh, playing on his uh, on his sound system. I said, "Oh, that's it. I I, like, I do enjoy listening to that artist, and I do enjoy Moby, the music that Moby has made." And uh, he was he couldn't believe it. <laughs> he could not believe this grandfatherly guy is talking to him about his music. Um, and I said to him, uh, and a few people who were sitting in the restaurant were nearby. They were listening in to to, to us talking. And uh, these are young kids who were 19 to 28 years of age. And I said to him, I said, well, you know, keep, keep something in mind. You know, uh, my wife and I, were, we're old, but I think, I still think I'm 17. I said, but, you know, you guys around, all, the, all your customers here, um, we are your customers, except you're looking at a time machine. You're looking at your customers 40 years from now. So all these kids sitting in here right now eating your food uh this is what we look like this is what we're this is what you're going to look like in 40 years as you reach your mid 60s here we are uh we're just giving you a little fast forward uh, look see and uh, i was saying to him we love coming here we love eating this food we love being down here but we we know we are clearly not of the age group of those of you who are here None, we won't be staying in a hostel next door or down the street or anything like that. Um, anyway, I found that really interesting. The other thing I find interesting about uh, our situation here in, in Amsterdam is uh, I have not seen, even in the hotel, um, I don't know if I've seen anyone my age. Uh, I think most of the guests here are a minimum 10 years younger and younger than that. Uh, so I'm going to say they're in there sort of 30s to 50s um, um and this is a nice hotel it's a nice property this is not a hotel for bargain hunters you're, you're not going to come here to the Amath hotel in downtown amsterdam looking for a for you know a 79.99 deal uh, there are holiday and expresses around the corner there are discount hotel all around us yes but this property is of a higher grade and what I needed for Jennifer and I was space so I could do what I do with you and not have Jennifer be cramped in the room while I'm on the air with you guys for hours on end. And so we're paying a premium price for the space, but we're, you get what you pay for at the end of the day. And yes, we've been upgraded uh, definitely by the hotel. There is no question about it. We've been upgraded and it is so much appreciated to say the least, and I can't I can't speak highly enough for the staff here, uh, the folks who are working in the buffet area downstairs, the restaurant, the front desk people, the concierge, the door people, the folks who handle the doors. They, they see us coming along, coming up the stairs. They're right there opening the door for us uh, to help us in, um, no problem at all. Got to admit, um, we've been using Ubers around here. Uh, wow, what a phenomenally handy service to have. Uh, Jennifer's doing all of it. I don't have time to set up the Uber stuff on my phone. My entire thought process is all about the YouTube channel and my other channel, Traveling with Bruce, the markets, when I'm on the air, when I'm next on the air. I got, I've got enough on my plate, so Jen has to look after. If we're going anywhere you handle the uber uh, we're going to see someplace you decide where we're going to go um, this kind of thing so jennifer has her job to do i have mine and the ubers have been phenomenal uh we've been picked up in audis in benzes <laughs> we've been picked up in nice cars around here um and you know it's it's just the same price as if you're uh, traveling really in anywhere else really uh maybe a euro more here and there but it is not outrageously priced. It's an excellent service. And uh, since you key in where you're at and where you're going, the driver knows before you they get here, you know, okay, I'm picking up this couple and they're I'm taking them to so-and-so and away you go. All we have to do is look out the window and just sightsee um, and what's going on. It's fantastic. It is interesting to see how young 
the travelers are here. And it is also interesting to note that now that COVID, this first, you know, crazy two-year wave has come and gone or two and a half year wave, we're on on another side of the COVID story. And the most, the group that is dying to travel the most are the young. They, they are dying to go and they want to be here. And oh my gosh, Amsterdam is crawling with college age kids. Uh, they're everywhere. Um, from all over Europe, from North America, from everywhere. They're here. They're, they're just... They're just so glad and happy to be able to be out and to be able to do whatever they're doing here. But I noticed that um, businesses, um, it's different if you're a business person here. I noticed that uh, nearby, just a half a block away, there are shops here that sell, um, they'll, they'll, they'll sell you cans of cola or they'll sell you bottles of water or they'll, you can buy a six pack of beer, you can buy a bottle of wine um there are no deals around here uh these these businesses have been hurting badly they were shut down completely for a long long time and they're just trying to get on their feet again the problem that these businesses have got right now is that the demographic of the shopper isn't there they they've got the backpackers coming in and they'll the backpacker will buy a bottle of water the backpacker will buy a soda They'll buy a chocolate bar, but these guys can't make money off of these these people. They need ancients like us. They need the old timers to come in because they look at us, Jennifer and I, and they go, they have cash. <laughs> they can buy anything they want. They can buy as much as they want. Uh, look after these people. They're hard to come by because I'm looking up and down the street, people coming and going here, and I'm not finding not finding 50 and 60 year olds there are a few yeah it's not like there aren't any but this we are in the minority absolute in the minority and we are being uh, sought after by by businesses uh, it's um, it's interesting in in this down downtown area we were we were at where we had a crepe and uh, coffee and so on we were like i said we're the oldest in the room of course they're oldest in the restaurant but that entire three or four block area that we walked up and down uh the business owners you can just i can just see in their faces the stress that they're under right now this is late may and they're crossing their fingers that the virus has run its course that there won't be another shutdown that uh there's not another <clears throat> you know medical thing that'll screw it all up again <clears throat> they're hoping that Restrictions are in place where people can come and they can go, and 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 uh, they will they will come here. Um, they're hoping, definitely hoping for a higher demographic of a visitor to add to the kits who've already shown up. They're they're praying that uh, the fifty year olds, the empty nesters, the new empty nesters. They're hoping they're coming here, and they're hoping they're going to spend here. Uh, you can just see it in their eyes, and there are stores everywhere with there are no customers in there there are very few clientele in these stores because what they're offering for sale are tourist goods touristy type stuff and uh souvenir stuff and uh, there are a diamond dozen here in amsterdam there are a diamond dozen in new york there are a diamond dozen in philadelphia they're all over la they're all over everywhere um and uh, uh, these these uh, 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 entrepreneurs around here have been starving for business, big time. I also noticed a uh, bought Jennifer a bottle of wine at, at a local kind of a cornery store here, kind of a corner store. Eighteen euros for a bottle of wine that I know for a fact. If we bought that bottle of wine back in Calgary, we could buy it for eight bucks, ten bucks Canadian. It's 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 more than double the price of uh of what we would pay now to be fair we are in tourist central where we're we do not deserve a discount of any significance because we're not in the burbs if we were in the suburbs of amsterdam we could go to various shopping centers and grocery stores and find the deals but that requires a 20 euro ride out and a 20 euro uber back 
then we just don't have it. We don't have the time. We just don't have the inclination. We don't have the energy. And so, okay. We buy the bottle of wine for 18 euros, knowing this. Jennifer can enjoy this wine over the next couple of days. But if she bought this by the glass, it would be 60 euros by the glass. So, okay, we'll pay less that way. It's just, just the way it is. And that's the way this thing is going. Most interesting. The other thing I've noticed, um, listening this morning to, uh, to uh, some pundits talking about the markets, and um, uh, listening to um, forecasts about employment and the current structure of the employment situation. Um, and this is where, where I keep forgetting, um, I keep forgetting this one fact, and that is that inside this old man's body is a guy who has the brain who's always thinking he's in his 20s. I'm always thinking I'm my, you know, I'm 18, I'm 24, I'm 28 years of age, and I'm always an entrepreneurial kind of guy, and I'm always looking around for the, the next opportunity. But I also have deep in here the, the memory bank and the experience of having been 20 back in 1975. I was 20. And so I've had the luxury of being an adult from 75 to now and all those experiences have been banked in here and have been stored in here and i've seen all kinds of stock markets i've seen all kinds of recessions i've seen all kinds of world events take place and the old adage is history has a way of repeating itself and we never learn from the last generation or the generation prior to that we all think that what we're doing is brand new and it's never been done before um, and it's happening again today. We're seeing it with Ukraine and Russia, where Russia is making a massive mistake. Uh, they have made an uncalculable uh, misread of the world and how it was going to react to what they're doing in Ukraine. Um, here in Europe, it's a big deal. Ukraine is just over there, uh, several hundreds of miles over there, but it's there. and. Um, the Russians had been um, welcomed into the European economy by all the European Union members. Um, European countries were more than happy to buy natural gas from the Russians because the thinking was that they would be addicted to the cash flow from Europeans and in return for that, Europeans would sell goods to Russia. Russia would sell energy to Europe, oil, natural gas, of course, and all kinds of other materials. And there would be alliances formed between Russian businesses, Russian cities and territories and industries with European businesses and, and, and areas. And that was happening for 30 years. There was a 30-year lull in hostilities all through the 90s the 2000s and 2010s those 30 years after the berlin wall fell down in 1989 after the berlin wall came down and that entire divide between the soviet union and all the countries behind the wall and western europe and all the countries over here 30, it's been 30 years of amalgamation, and it's been 30 years of opening up trade restrictions and, and getting uh, westernized products into Eastern Europe and getting Eastern Europe uh, products and, and manpower and education over here. And it was a coexistence that was building and growing. And the German government wanted to have stronger ties with the Russians not weaker ties, economically stronger, so that the Russians would be just as addicted to economic success like the Germans have been, which has allowed Germany, the country, to grow its wealth to unprecedented heights, to allow its children to have free uh, university educations, to allow free health care for the entire country, to allow retirement at age 55 and older to to uh, grant six weeks minimum holiday 
paid holiday per year to enjoy one full year of maternity leave at a minimum uh, for either parent or both parents. I mean, on and on and on came the benefits of a very successful economic engine. Putin, for whatever reason, had us, has this reasoning in his brain that if I send in 200,000 troops into Ukraine, we can just take it over and within five days, we can overrun Kiev, put my strong man back in power in Kiev, and then we've now reclaimed all that land. We have all that agriculture. We have all those young kids in, in Ukraine that are westernized thinkers and entrepreneurs. We'll, we'll own them all. We'll just own them. And they'll be part of the, of the Russia, and we'll just continue on. And the Europeans are going, no, no, that's not how this works. You guys not getting it. 30 years of cooperation means respecting our borders. We respect your borders. You respect ours. We respect your culture. You respect ours. And in Putin's case, it seems that the Ukraines don't deserve to exist because they're as terrible as the Nazis were. They're worse than any other race in existence. We have to eliminate them from existence. It's like a genocidal mission that this guy is on and he miscalculated how not only how europe would unify against this entire game plan but that nato as a whole and now the international community most of the international community is stepping up and going not gonna happen and um, now all of a sudden in three months uh the russians have been completely cut off from the almost the entire western uh, economic world and the fallout has only just begun to be realized and will be realized by all Russians. It will, it will slowly sink in that whatever Putin is telling you guys about the reasons and, and, and the, the, the justification to do what he's doing, over on this side, it's going to re, they're going to realize the price that had to be paid for us to invade that country and do what we're doing was never thought of as a possibility in, in Russia at all. No, no one thought at all that every single McDonald's would be shut down, every Starbucks would disappear, the Burger Kings are gone, the KFCs are gone, all kinds of Western businesses have walked out, all the brands have walked out, the Italian fashion brands, the French, the German industry, the, uh, the French industry, all of Europe's advantages and jobs for the youth of Russia have disappeared, have completely been wiped out. And it is going to become, I, I'm afraid to say, over the next few years, very, very difficult for the Russian kids to be able to get out and be allowed into Europe with the paperwork they've got. This is the next stage where eventually uh, those in Russia are gonna be cut off from the outside world to even be allowed to travel into Europe to, to understand this side of it. This, this, is a non-stop wheel that will continue to turn over and and put russia into a box way over here unto itself it will end up being a quasi third world uh run entity until putin is eliminated retires gets taken out whatever and even then uh the entire political system spy system, secret police system, judicial system, economic system has to be completely revamped to be brought up to Western standards. And I don't see that happening in the next 20 years. No way can it happen in 20 years. It's going to take a generational turnover where the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the natural time of life will eliminate the old thinkers from the 50s the 60s and the 70s and the 80s as 20 years from now happens i'll be long gone it'll be 20 what is it gonna be 2045 i'll be 95 years old 2045 will happen and 45 year olds will have been born in 2000 after the berlin wall fell 11 years earlier than that uh, those that generation and forward will have to be responsible for trying to find a way to bring Russia back into the European Union that will go on without it. And I just get the sense around here, uh, people are going, okay, Russia, you want to do that? You're up. 
you're up. We're not even going to look back anymore. We're moving forward without you guys. We'll pay whatever we have to pay to keep you out because what you, we see you doing in Ukraine is not going to happen on our turf. We're not, we're not going to tolerate that. So we're going to become un, one with NATO. This is going to be a unified force. You will be kept in check and you're not going to be able to expand out. And the bottom line is you you try to hang on to the Ukrainian territory you've already got. The price you're going to have to pay now to just in, in, in bodies, uh, I'm talking about, and dollars, you're not going to want to pay it. You're, you first, you can't afford it because uh, eventually you'll be broke. Uh, but number two, you're not going to want to keep paying this price because the number of Russians not coming back from Ukraine is staggering. The number of Russian soldiers not returning home is scary. And um, those who do come back will have their stories to tell privately to family members and say, well, what you see on TV versus what I saw in the field and with all of my buddies in the regiment and whatever, we have stories that we'll tell you about privately away from prying ears. And then you'll get the, you'll get the, the word on the street what really happened. And that will permeate into Russian society over time. In the meantime, we are watching a market that is being affected by this and will be for quite some time. Uh, elevated prices for energy, elevated prices for metals, uh, much higher prices on food, there are going to be food issues, dramatic food issues in various countries around the world that had no idea. They had no clue that if the Russians were to invade the Ukraine, that their domestic food supplies would be upended like they could not have foreseen. And this is where Biden and the White House had played it correctly for six, eight months prior to Russians moving in on Ukraine. The White House and the administration kept coming out with spy photographs of all those Russian tanks and armored personnel carriers and all of these military uh, barracks and tents and the so-called military exercises the Russians were doing and all that crap uh, was being exposed to the planet to all for all to see. And inside the USA and outside the USA and through all the countries, there were deniers, there were those who were believing the problem and were realizing, oh, this is going to be an ugly mess. And then there were the deniers going, no, 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 it's all fine. He says he's not going to invade. We should trust him. And now here we are 90 days later with complete destruction all over the place in the eastern end of that country. And now we hear today, yeah, they're stealing the grain out of the grain elevators and uh, uh, Russian ships have are picking up the grain uh, that was supposed to be for export, for balance of payments, for Ukraine to pay its bills. They're stealing the harvest from last year and uh, utilizing it for themselves. It just goes on and on. It's a complete game plan to annihilate Ukraine from existence. And uh, the question will be, how far will the West go to defend, her, uh, to defend Ukraine and kick the Russians out of there? This is what we will wait to see. The markets will be affected. We're seeing high inflation at the moment, thanks to the pandemic and the restart of the economy. We are hearing today higher case numbers in Beijing. Beijing is about to enter, I think, the lockdown Shanghai had. I think Beijing is only weeks away from a full-blown lockdown scenario that is going to screw things up dramatically. And um, I just don't see China getting anywhere near the economic growth it wants to get um they they can't get it to where they want to get it they cannot um uh, put the virus into submission like they can human beings and the human spirit they you might be able to control your population and scare them into doing what you want them to do because of the secret police and the secret work camps and all the other crap you have over there but the virus doesn't care the virus is fearless has no emotion it just looks for hosts to survive in and thrive in. And right now, the incredibly cramped quarters in which millions, hundreds of millions of Chinese live in is the perfect antidote for the virus to continue to spread throughout China right now. And Beijing is the next area 
that is likely to become uh, very, uh, uh, very heavily shut down and restricted. And th this means the the world economy will continue to suffer from this entire uh, um, uh, supply chain issue we've been dealing with. Uh, and it's going to be uh, affecting many parts of our economies in the Western world. The, top, the 20 G20 countries, we're all going to get it. And um, uh, there's no avoiding it. And so that's where I'm at. That's what I'm seeing. Um, there are pockets of good news here and there. Um, and again, North America and Europe, uh, job openings everywhere. Uh, but I've said this before, um, the average life of a typical worker in North America and in the G20 countries as a whole, which covers pretty well all of Europe, the developed world, a typical work career is 40 years, typically 40. You start at age 25 and you go to age 65. Some, they start at age 20 and go to age 60, but generally speaking, it's a 40 year work life. Some folks can only work 10, 20, 30 years and then they physically wear out or health wise, they're done. Others can go longer than 40 years, but it all evens out to about 40 years. And that means every single year that goes by, we lose two and a half percent of the workforce just because of the time. It's just like an option expiring as it depreciates. Time, we depreciate. And every year we lose two and a half percent of the workforce that is available to us. And it's now into the second year of the virus, going into the third year of the virus. And the, uh, the, uh, the number of people that have been allowed into countries the last two and a half years, immigrants, has been severely restricted because of the pandemic. Forget the fact that three, four years ago, we had in the U.S. a president who virtually shut down all immigration into the United States. Canada, as many as they took in, could not out compensate for the number of people that weren't coming into America. Uh, but countries in Europe have also been restricting immigration in. And the reality is we're not having enough kids domestically to replace ourselves. Uh, the United States birth rate went up for the first time this year in decades, it's a 1% increase in the birth rate. That isn't enough kids to replace two and a half percent of the workers we're going to lose every single year as time goes by. So uh, we've got, we got big problems. Um, there are billions of people in the world who would give anything to be in our uh, societies and we'll take whatever jobs we can give them. They'll take the lowest level job just to have one. Uh, but we are so reluctant to open our societies up that we're choking ourselves off. And so I'm 66. You think I'm going to start at the bottom at a department store washing floors for a living? Not going to happen. Uh, can't physically do it even if I wanted the job. Uh, so where are these workers coming from and this economy that we're in is being uh, held back because we have job openings everywhere for skilled labor and there's a lack of it and there is the problem the other problem of course is i'm the 65 year old baby boomer 66 year old baby boomer right now and i'm at the end of that bus all the baby boomers that were born 10 years before i was from 1954 53 52 51 all the way to 1945 46 those kids are 67 to 77 years of age. They're out of the workforce and they're never coming back. My, my generation from 66 to, to, to down to age 60, we are leaving the workforce and not coming back. And we're the bubble. We're this big blob of baby boomers that is phasing out. And then behind us is a smaller pool of the kids of the kids and the kids of the kids of the kids, and we just haven't replaced ourselves. And so the economy of the United States, Canada, Japan, South Korea, France, Germany, Italy, the United Kingdom, you name them all, the top 20 economies, we are shrinking. We are wanting more stuff, oh yeah, but we're not growing the qualified workforce that we need to operate this this very complicated world that we've created. And so we're not replicating enough of us to grow the economy. We're trying to hang on. And so stagflation 
you're hearing that word more and more and more uh, is a problem. And we've got issues where in the third world, uh, we're going to have hunger issues this year, which means desperate people doing desperate things. Uh, that's going to come up. And the Ukrainian thing is just adding to the misery. Because um, who knew that 80% of the wheat that is consumed in Egypt came from the Ukraine? Uh, where is Egypt going to get 80% of the wheat they need to feed their own population? Uh, they're not going to get it from the Russians. The Russians aren't going to share it uh, with the, the Egyptians. The Russians are going to bring it into their own country because they've been importers of wheat from around the world for decades. They're just going to steal the Ukrainian wheat from last year. But what about this year? Who's going to grow wheat this year in Ukraine? What farmer is going to even think of taking their wheat crop, if they can get one off, where are they selling it to? They can't take it to eastern Ukraine and jump it in the grain elevators over there. The Russians aren't going to pay for it. They're going to steal it. So where can it go? How can it get out of the country into the world markets? Grain has to move in giant shipping containers, huge ships that are designed as grain transport ships. Uh, you want to move grain by the truckload or by the rail car? You are talking about a huge increase in cost. And with oil at 110 bucks a barrel in Texas and probably 113 in, in uh, Europe, the cost of shipping everything has just gone up sky high. So this, this is where Egypt and other countries like Egypt are in huge trouble because the cost of their basic staples and diet will likely double in price this year or more. And that is a nightmare for governments coming up. Uh, there's going to be un political unrest everywhere, all kinds of problems. So I tell you, I, uh, this market is uh, on pins and needles watching all of these uh, developments happening in slow motion. This is all happening day in, day out, slowly but surely. We're going to watch into this. Sorry about this depressing rant. I hope I'm not up downing or uh, upsetting you too much, but it is what it is. And um, here in Amsterdam, like I say, it's... Uh, a different vantage point, I got to admit, um, here it's optimism, um, but there's also the keen awareness that around this region, um, mainly to the east, towards uh, Germany and Poland and the Baltic states, uh, Finland, Sweden, just north of here, uh, they want in NATO. Uh, and then over by the uh, southwest or southeast from here, that's Hungary. Bulgaria, that is, uh, that is uh, Ukraine, Belarus, um, Romania, Austria, these regions, it's dicey. Uh, they're, they're not happy with what's happening in Ukraine right now. They're not happy, especially the way the Russians are conducting their operations inside the country. Once they get in there, it's really bad. It's bad enough with their missiles flying in. But once the troops show up, then the atrocities begin. And this, there's, there are people keeping score here. Believe you me, the international community is keeping score of this. And this is not going to go away. You're not going to be able to sweep this away with some kind of a peace treaty. Uh, when the Russians want to negotiate some kind of a treaty with Ukraine and Western Europe, uh, they're not going to let go. The Europeans are not letting go of the war crimes that are being conducted as we speak right now. This is not going away. So I don't I don't know how this is going to play out, but it ain't going to be pretty. All right, there you have it. Uh, welcome all to the uh, show, the channel. Um, thanks for sticking around. We're up down 96 points on the Dow with 11 minutes to go before we open. The good news is that the, the, the market is not being uh, uh, heavily... Uh, uh, heavily badly influenced at the moment um with this dick sporting good announcement that for a while set the market off um we are off a third of a percentage point on the dow uh 0.3 on s p 0.4 on nasdaq this is not an issue to worry about uh we're up 119 a barrel on crude 110 yeah okay um would it be nicer if we were at 90 bucks a barrel yes it would um will we get there not today 
but uh, we don't seem to we don't seem to have an issue where oil is going to go now to uh, 120 or 130 bucks a barrel. That doesn't seem to be the issue. So good news there. Thank you, those of you who have already thrown some thumbs ups our way for the show. I see at least 118 or so so far. I do appreciate that. With 10 minutes to go uh, before we start. Uh, the day off in we are, uh, we are getting uh, thumbs ups coming in here i appreciate that very much thank you all uh if you're able to hit the old thumbs up button and add to it please do let me know what number you are it's great uh, welcome to the uh, to the telecast everybody uh hope you're having an okay week this week um a couple of announcements coming up now this is wednesday the 25th of may now tomorrow thursday i'm on the air Amsterdam uh, for we're leaving Amsterdam for Dortmund on Friday uh, on Monday uh, coming up of uh, the th that I believe is the 30th of May that is Memorial Day and the markets are closed we will not be on the air Monday I will be back on the air on Tuesday uh, June I guess that would be June 1 so uh, keep an eye for that so it's uh, uh, Friday we're off Monday we're off we're back on the next Tuesday um, but what else is going on here? Um, just trying to stay on top of a few things here. Uh, uh, yeah, here for FL saying, Uncle Bruce, I was waiting in line at the supermarket today, and I was thinking, whoa, this stuff's expensive. Uh, paid for groceries more than if I just go to a restaurant. Uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you, restaurant prices are changing. Restaurant menus are changing. I'm noticing um, little things here and there about restaurants. Um, um, some of the higher end quality meals aren't available anymore. They're just, they know they can't sell them. Uh, it's just too expensive. They'd have to, you know, add a lot of dollars to the price of the item. They're dropping items off their menus and going with the uh, lower cost foods. All kinds of little things happening there. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, let's see. Um, FL, I couldn't find bread under five uh, euros a kilo. Um, and uh, Jennifer saying, DH, the Doughty Foster, I didn't receive an alert either. I found it through Uncle Bruce Community Tap. Hope that helps. Oh, by the way, yeah, just so you know, this morning, I went live for the the alert show for Gold Bagel members right here. Um, I was doing the show for about 10 minutes, and I noticed there was only one viewer watching me. So obviously, the YouTube links didn't take, and many of you didn't get the official alert that I was going on the air. So what I did was, uh, when I finished that show off, I went back to the uh, to my channel's analytics, and I released the Golden Bagel member alert show as an open show that anyone can watch. And I just put it out there, and uh, the hope I had was that a, num a number of you would find it, be able to watch it, um, and, and catch up with me on it. Um, it's, it's, it's all I could have, all I could do this morning unfortunately it's just um it was kind of kind of weird um uh thank you all though uh, for those of you who caught the show i hope it's all right um uh, again it, it's been a uh, it was a weird uh it was a weird show this morning uh and and the youtube channel has been acting somewhat weirdly i don't know what what to make of it uh but it looks like we're okay here i think we've got an okay crowd Thank you, uh, those of you uh, who are here, 135 thumbs ups in. Thank you for that. I uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, that damn lampshade is crooked, says Alberto. Alberto, I don't know what uh, what lamp you're referring to. Uh, there are no lamps here, although there, 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 there's this lamp. You see the round thing here and here? You see those? That's a ring lamp in front of my computer that's lighting me up. That might be a lamp, but I, you can't see it. You can only see the reflection. So I don't know what lamp you're referring to. There is no lamp there's never been a lamp a uh, good morning uh jj uh you, you, you're never told to be a hipster uncle bruce there you go um <laughs> carol is number 88 thank you um wonderful to see you guys uh splare good morning to y'all happy i would manage to wake up for my lunchtime nap before the opening um <laughs> what's going on nick is here how you doing buddy number 101 um anyway there you have it yes here you go uh, uh i think putin decided to invade because ukraine kicked out the russian puppet 
and Zelensky was uh, democratically elected, he miscalculated big time. That's right. Uh, the the Russians had in effect installed another puppet leader on a rigged election. The Ukrainians were having none of it. They overthrew this guy and went with new elections, held them. They were legit. Zelensky won big time. And uh, this puppet uh, fled the country with as many billions as he could steal on the way out the door. And they ran over, uh, they found his so-called palace full of all kinds of goodies that he shouldn't have had. And on and on it went. Yeah, the, the old Russian way of doing things has been upended in Ukraine. And now the Russians are trying to take it back by force. And the Ukrainians are saying, we're still not going to capitulate to this crap. You guys can bomb every apartment building we got. You can bomb every school. You can bomb every museum. You can bomb, but we're not going to be genocided out of existence. Sorry, not going to happen. We're going to outgun you guys with friends of the West uh, because since we're protecting our land rather than occupying it, we're going to make your time here absolutely miserable. And I think the Russians will eventually beg to get out uh, and find a way to, to uh, walk out of there. But uh, right now they got lots of bullets and so on goes the games it is unbelievable uh, anyway uh Merco, apple is already looking to produce more in vietnam and india it's not the it, it's not the, the sudden but steadily shifting uh Merco, i hear you uh they are looking to uh set up shop elsewhere and it's going to be interesting to see this next few years how this plays out um are they going to uh walk out of there out of china entirely john wants to know if with alberta how was your cruise Max, I wonder why Roe versus Wade needs to replenish the soldier and labor fodder. I don't know what this means. Uh, Michael, the future is robots. There you go, Alberto Cruz. The Alaska is amazing. Cruz is great. Max, uh, we're becoming too aware of our collective mortality to reproduce. Alberto, um, uh, Norwegian uh, cruise line, Alaskan cruise, highly recommended. This is my 29th cruise, but first to Alaska. Uh, Max, uh, geez, Bruce, it's already been a rough week, laughing out loud. Vilbus, Uncle Bruce, now... Uh, do Americans, uh, uh, Uncle Bruce, now do Americans in the gun lobby? Oh, man, what a disaster in Texas. Wasn't that awful? It's just terrible. Just terrible. I don't want to go there. Uh, John, uh, welcome back uh, to Alberto. Glad you had a nice trip. Or great things about the Alaskan cruises. It's on our list for sure. Uh, did you see Kerr's press conference? Snippets of it. Yeah, snippets. Uh, I agree with everything he says. Uh, no question about it. Um, and yep, are you aware we did not receive? Yes, I am aware, and I've been trying to, I've been sending out the links to everybody. Uh, there are times where YouTube just doesn't get it done, and they didn't get it done for me. Nick, um, uh, Uncle Bruce, I shorted uh, Home Depot yesterday on the uh, uh, on the hype. My average 285. How low do you think H Home Depot will go? Looking to score at least two grand on a quick trade. Well, I you know I don't know, my friend. Uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, we're going live in two minutes, so we'll watch it with you and see what it uh, brings. Uh, close to two eighty seven ninety two last night. Obviously, you need a two dollar drop uh, or so from here to be in the chips. Um, and right now, the market is showing down one thirty three on the Dow. So it looks like you're in the right direction at the moment. Um, Mirko, the pre-show kind of like the one-on-one. -on -one. I was the only watcher. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Vilbus, 141 thumbs ups right on. Uh, thank you all of you for throwing one, uh, thumbs ups our way. Oh, I've, I've been gone for a while. Nice profile pic, Bama Babe, says Alberto. Um, and uh, Bama Babe says, same old scenario. Someone took my candy and I want it back. There you go. <laughs> Welcome all of you to the channel this morning. We're going live here in about a minute and a half. And we'll see how things start off for the day. Um, uh, appreciate you all being with us uh, so far today. It's been uh, a, a typical, uh, another typical interesting day. We got the Texas thing going on. We got the Ukraine thing going on. We got all kinds of stuff happening. And um, it's not always good, is it? Not always good. Uh, welcome uh, to the uh, to the telecast. Um, let me see if I can get. Uh, Couple more uh, uh, pre-market uh, peaks here. I'm showing right now Rocket Lab uh, as we're about to start trading. It was down three cents in the pre-market. SoFi up three. GameStop has gained eighty cents. AMC up eight. Uh, Matterport off seven. Twenty-three me down two. Spire up four. 
uh, smart rent up eight cents. Uh, Apple down two bucks. Goldman down a buck sixty-five. Cisco down a nickel. Tesla down four dollars. Arc Innovations down eight cents. Microsoft down one thirty-six. Bed Bath Beyond down eleven. Down eleven to seven seventy. Uh, Pfizer down twenty-six cents. HP Hewlett Packard down seven cents. Car Carvana down fifteen. And Twitter up twenty-six cents. We are now, I think, open for trading. We are up and running. Let's take a look at these markets together and see how things are going. Devil King is hitting the bells. Thank you, Devil King, for that. Larry is in, in the house. Well, welcome. Uh, he says, last bell ringing from not Washington, D.C. I hope to be back home at some point today. Right on, buddy. Glad to have you here. Thank you for this. Uh, Sean and Wendy, Bama Babe, ours uh, do, does not show uh, in the bell anymore. We have to go to our mail whenever you use. Type Bruce Gold Bagel Alert, and all the alerts are there together. It's crazy. Um, Larry, good luck, says Alberto, coming back. Bama Babe, Alberto, thank you, Alberto. Larry, uh, we got the flight arrival time mixed up with the flight departure time. Oh, uh, there you go. Okay, I'm showing the Dow at the moment down 133 points, about a minute into the uh, session here. I've got HD at 286.48. So, uh, Nick, you're a dollar closer to Norvana, down a buck 44 right now. Matterport down uh, six cents. Uh, uh, I'm assuming we're open and trading. We're just going to check these out here. It's too early to really guarantee all these quotes. Um, waiting for the markets to settle in and give us some direction. I'm showing, I think, GameStop up to 9208, up 293. I've got Dick's Sporting Goods here. Let's take a look at it right now. 7124 was, uh, I believe, last night's close. Um, 6464 is the opening down seven a six dollar seventy eight cents nine and a half percent on Dick's Sporting Goods at the moment. Um, got the Dow down one twenty six, S and P down ten points, Nasdaq down twenty nine. This is not a big drop on any of these indexes at all. Oil up eighty eight cents to one ten sixty five. All right, um, and. Um, here we go. Sean and Wendy said to Bama Babe, so glad we found it. I was messaging Uncle Bruce to find out what happened. He had no idea. YouTube moved it and no one told us. There you go. It was a glitch over there. Hopefully no more. We'll find out. Thank you for uh, being here, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming in. We're down 106 on the Dow. Looks like we're improving just a tiny bit here. Uh, Home Depot down 139. Matterport down six cents. Smart Rent is up seven. SoFi at 684, up 12. GameStop up 265 to 9180. We have AMC at 1054 up 15 cents. Uh, ATIP down three cents. Uh, Rocket Lab down two pennies. Sixtera down a, about a nickel. And uh, ME is is up seven and a half. Spire is up four. Pfizer up 12. Uh, Hewlett Packard down 28 at the moment. Um, we've got. Um, uh, we've got Manic Vectors up 53 cents, IBM down 43, Microsoft off 98 cents, Apple down 64 cents. Not much happening. We're down 350 on Goldman to 310 bucks. Cisco's down six cents. Facebook up a dollar. Amazon is up five bucks. Tesla's up four. Google down 14. So uh, early uh, early trades. Not a lot of movement either direction on anything here. Um, Home Depot now 288 up. 80 cents. We got down, down 58 points, improving on the Dow now with S&P down four and NASDAQ up a point. Uh, we've turned the gr into green on NASDAQ. Uh, Larry, on the plus side, I got to see Pikes Peak and historic gold mining district. Right on, Larry. <laughs> right on, buddy. Um, safe trips getting back. Hope you have safe travels coming home. Um, we're down 68 uh, right now on the uh, on the uh, Dow Jones. Uh, Gabriel, we're set. Right on, Gabriel. Way to go. Um, we're down 42 on uh, the Dow right now. Um, S and P down one tenth of a per, of a point. We're virtually flat. Nasdaq up 9.6 points. So the market seems to be trying to uh, uh, trying to come back right now. Uh, we'll see if this keeps happening or not. All right. Um, uh, John Bickman Spire, just uh, go out of business already uh, or at least do us a solid ND list for the love of Mike. 
not going to happen. Uh, they're going to do. Uh, they're going to make money. They're going to grow and make money. Uh, 131 up four cents. Go Spire Go. Um, Me at 288 up eight cents. Six star down a nickel. Rocket Lab is up three and a half to 440. ATIP down three to 180. AMC up 26 cents. GameStop up three and a quarter. 9240. We got SoFi at 689 up 17 cents. Smart Rent up 15 cents to 557. Matterport up fifth, uh, one and a half cents now. Matterport at four ninety nine and a half. The Home Depot up one seventy five to two eighty nine, and we got Dow down only twenty five points. The Dow is, looks looks like it wants to turn and go to the green. Um, not surprised to see this actually. Uh, the S and P is up two thirds of a point. Nasdaq is up seven points. They're green now. The Dow looks like it's coming the right direction. It's only down twenty points. At the moment, and I think it wants to go green as well. All right. Uh, Splares, Pikes Peak reminds me about Pikes Place in Seattle. Are you there or somewhere else and enjoy traveling, Larry? John, laughing out loud. John, uh, trying to reverse psychology. I figure, you know, I'll, I'll tell the stock. Why don't you just delist it? That'll make it go up. You see, it's the reverse psychology. Sneaky. Genius. Wiley Coyote. Genius uh, type thinking. Right on. We're up four and a half on S and P. We're up twenty five on Nasdaq, and the, the 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 Dow Jones looks like we've just turned the corner and we've gone green. We might be green on all markets. We're up fourteen on the Dow now. Yep, we're up eight on S and P. Up thirty four on Nasdaq. We've gone to the plus side, to the away from the dark side, to the good side. This is good stuff. See what we can get out of this. 151 gain on Home Depot. Uh, we have Matterport uh, right now at five bucks, up three cents. Smart Rent up 15 to 557. SoFi now 694, up 22 cents, still climbing um, on 1.95 million. We are climbing on uh, SoFi 696 now. GameStop 93.29, up four dollars. AMC at 1074, up 35 cents. ATIP. Down a nickel at 178. Rocket Lab is up five and a half. Six Terra down only four cents. 23Me is up 12 to 292. Spire is up 3.9 cents to 130.9. Pfizer up 35 cents. Uh, Hewlett Packard up 11 at uh, 34.85. We've got uh, Twitter up 74 cents to 36.50. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, Robinhood at 9. 31 up 20 cents. Manic up 230. IBM up 11 cents. Microsoft only down 22 cents. Ah, just went green on Microsoft. We're up a nickel on Microsoft. Apple is only down 33 cents at 140.03. It looks like Apple wants to go green. It was at 138.34 on the opening. We're now at 140 a share. We're about to possibly go green on Apple. Goldman down only a dollar thirty. It was down to three oh nine ninety eight. It's now three twelve sixty five. Almost a three dollar recovery. We're about to go green, perhaps on Goldman. We just went green on Cisco. We're up one penny right now, uh, as we speak. Facebook is green, sixty two cents. Amazon is up seventeen. Tesla's up eight, and Google wants to go green. It's only down a dollar ninety two. Uh, Google. Google has recovered uh twenty three dollars from its opening and it's now down a buck ninety two we're about to go green on google so the markets are turning on the dow is up 23 uh, s p up 12 nasdaq up 59 so here we go with the recovery as we've been doing all week uh we're coming on the nasdaq had a bad day yesterday now it's turning it's coming on again and the dow continues to rise for a third day in a row at this moment in time. That's all I can tell you. How long is it going to last? I don't know. All right. Okay. What else is going on here? Uh, good morning and welcome, everybody. Um, Larry says, I've been to both. I visited Portland, Seattle, and Denver on this trip alone. Coyote says, good morning, everybody. SoFi is pressing seven, says John, 699. Good morning, Coyote. Uh, Wooly Mark, uh, Mon Monkey Tard McGee, uh, laugh out loud. The watch list has gotten so long, hasn't it, Bruce? It has, Nick. Uh, SoFi set a reminder uh, for 12 p.m. for Uncle Bruce's SoFi above $8 party shelf. So <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> Let's hope so. GameStop 9190 up 275. Uh, the Dow up 16. Um, Home Depot 289 42 up 149 right now. Ooh, did Noto buy another 37,000 shares? Austin wants to know. Uh, Larry, I don't know who I don't know who this Pike guy is, uh, but he seems popular out west, this Pike guy. Um yeah, uh, John says yes, and another board member bought like 17,000 shares of SoFi. Yeah, the insiders are buying up SoFi stock with their dough. Very good sign. Um, options, no match. I watched Uncle Bruce's class on butterfly spreads last night. Wow. I feel like a neophyte when uh, when he learned Kung Fu. <laughs> Tiff says, we touched seven already on SoFi. Right on. Nick, um, Austin, forget no Noto buying. Just forget that. I'll have you know that I bought 100 shares yesterday. I, Nick, bought 100 yesterday. That news must have gotten out. The, that's what's moving the market. Noto's nice, but with Nick buying 100 shares, here we go. How about that? It's the real deal. Austin, the people, um, or the people, the people, what's this? Uh, buddy, what I see, but how it is. Pennies to him need to know he owns $20 million of SoFi. It's a pretty good chunk of his net worth. He has got a bunch. Wing Commander, when would be a good time to write GameStop calls again if it pops another five bucks or so? I'm assuming. 9166 is where we're at right now. Can this stock give us a five, ten dollar jump today into the $95, $98 range? Wouldn't that be lovely? You could then take a look at uh, writing 105s or 110s weeks out. I don't know. Right now, 91.50 up 235. At the, that's all we got. We're up 23 on the Dow. SoFi is back to 687, still up 15 cents. Smart Rent 555 up 13. Matterport right now 495 down 3 cents. So the first rush is through. We're into 11 minutes of the market now. We're trying to figure out where we're going. The SP is up 8. NASDAQ's up 51. We got the market going green. We'll see what happens. Um, Wooly says, do you remember the days when you only had one ticker to comment on? Uh, BW, yep, another 250000 buy from Commander Noto. Wing Commander says, just finished the rollover class, says Wing Commander. Good stuff, Uncle Bruce. Uh, wish I would have watched it earlier. I would not have sold my 110s on GameStop too early for 705 Um, It went down to the fours yesterday. I am such a moron. It's never too late to learn. That's why I keep referring you guys to these lessons. Get your butts over there and watch all 13 lessons. There are gems inside of every one of them. Some of them are an hour 40 to two hours, 10 minutes long. Each one, there's a lot in there you're going to pick up and you're going to become a smarter, more patient, more deadly trader of these contracts and you're going to make a lot of money. I'm convinced of it you can do well with it you just gotta kind of get into it lesson learned says wing commander uh h gregory are we waiting for gamestop covered calls what what's the story here well for those of you who have written calls you're watching to see if the market has any kind of up movement those of you who have bought back covered calls and are looking to write again you're waiting for the market to tell you what to do we're watching the dow down right now 11 it was up a bit that's down again we're waiting for a market direction here we're going to see what GameStop wants to tell us to do what is apple telling us to do microsoft cisco hewlett packer we got we got stuff to write on um we're ready we're ready to act just waiting for the market to tell us what to do duncan is in the house welcome sir tif wing commander uh, sega is a win don't be beat yourself for making money says tip Beach Boy, word is Mirko had a one-on-one -on -one this morning, and this is why GameStop surges. Now, Mirko, please let it dip so I can buy my covered calls back really cheap, cheap, please. You can keep playing afterwards, man. It's okay. Once I get them back, you can do whatever you want. Beach Boy, you're a very accommodating gentleman. Well, well done. Wing Commander, I know a profit is a profit. Yeah, I know. Duncan, I'm home, intellectuals and simpletons. Welcome back, Duncan. I hope you're getting better, stronger, um, and you're going to be okay. We'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. We're down 3.7 points on the Dow Jones. We're uh, still looking at, uh, I think we got a gain here. Let's see. We're up 6 on S&P. We're up 31 on NASDAQ. And the Dow right now seems to be down about, well, 
up now four and a half points. The Dow just turned again green a second time this morning. We're going higher now on the Dow again. All right, let's go, baby. Let's go. What can I say? Uh, what a market. Uh, what a world in which we live. Um, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, Merco Beach Boy will do as you ask. Laugh out loud. Wing Commander. However, it is easy to maximize the profit. Just need to understand the psychology of the markets. This is where class number 13 is pure gold. Uh, again, this, I'm glad you're enjoying these. I really am. I'm convinced uh, those of you who have not taken these classes, this is, uh, this is going to give you a lot of answers to questions you never knew you had. Um, you've got to learn the psychology of the opponent that you're up against. Uh, so many of you are trying to become self-employed, writing call options to make income. You have got to understand who your enemy is and how they're thinking so that you can outmaneuver them and stay ahead of these guys. Um, it's not as simple just writing a call and hoping it'll go the right direction. You've got to know going in where you stand and how you can benefit and how it can work for you or against you. You've got to understand this. And stink bids and stink offers, another key ingredient. Cheers to all of you. Uh, I'm drinking this Coke Zero. Um, not a big fan of it. I'm not sure if this is now what's now called Diet Coke around here. Um, can't find those those cans uh, with the Diet Coke logos on it. Uh, but every single store seems to have these red cans or the other red cans. Um, can't find the, the Diet Coke. Anyway, can't find caffeine-free Diet Coke anywhere in Amsterdam, at least not in the tourist section. Maybe in the burbs we'll see. Perhaps I can get caffeine-free in Dortmund see what's going on um austin i'm hoping the sofi chart will look like the arlp chart over the last three years it could happen Gaiotti, maybe we can ship you some diet coke for uh, oscar uh thumbs up number 165 thank you all of you out there for hitting those thumbs ups for us uh it's great that you're doing it i appreciate it uh well let's see um i wonder what is going on out there um trying to uh, keep on top of these markets gamestop right now uh is is uh, hold on here where are we at 90 uh where am i 91 something 9114 on gamestop 9114 up 199 right now um the low today 90 dollars 14 cents about a dollar from here was the low of the day the high 93.52 we've only had a couple of bucks of movement nothing much going on uh coke zero has less caffeine than Diet Coke, but it's still got it. Yeah, that's right. Tiff, I bought another 100 Rocket Lab the day before they reported their earnings. Uh, of course, we hit a new all-time low just a couple of days later. Unbelievable. Larry, I think the artificial sweetener we use in North America is illegal in the EU, laughing out loud. Wing Commander, how about some Coca Cola light without caffeine? How about that? Mirko, there is... Coke Light should be the diet version, and Coke Zero in Europe, different sweeteners. Tiff, Larry, the corn sugar stuff is illegal here. Um, Beach Boy, Uncle Bruce, we going to have a problem. You know, you do know I have Coke Zero over here for our one-on-ones. Remember? There you go. Mirko, uh, Coke Light is in silver cans. That's right. The Coca-Cola Light is what they also call it in Mexico. They don't call it Diet Coke. They call it Coca-Cola Light. Uh and then there's the classic Coca-Cola that's out there, the Coke Zero, and the, oh, it just never ends. Um, I just I just go for caffeine-free Diet Coke is what I try to buy. Hard to do um, in certain jurisdictions. We're up two and a half on the Dow again. We're up two on S&P. We're up 11 on NASDAQ. That's where we're at right here, right now. That's the market. Uh, Home Depot, 290, uh, up 242 a share today. Uh, Matterport up a penny at 499. Smart Rent up three cents to 545. SoFi at 681, up nine cents. GameStop, 9048, up 133. AMC's up three cents to 1042. ATIP down a nickel to uh, 178. Rocket Lab down eight cents to 429. 
Uh, Sixterra unchanged, twelve fifty six. Me is up uh, four and a half cents to two eighty four and a half. Spire up three cents to one dollar thirty cents. Uh, Pfizer up thirty cents to fifty three seventy one. Hewlett Packard down eight cents to thirty four sixty nine. Hey, Bargoon down here. Uh, Texas Instruments up 23 cents. Twitter up 75 cents. Uh, Highcroft Mining down 3.3 to 118. Carvana up three bucks to 29 dollars. That has fallen such a way. Robinhood is 901 up uh, down a dime right now. Uh, Vanek up 29 cents only to 224. IBM is down 58 cents. Microsoft down 47 cents. Apple down 112. Goldman down 287. Cisco down three cents. Facebook is now down. Uh, uh, Facebook is now down. Um, hold on, it's not working for me. Uh, Facebook down one sixty three. Amazon is up ten bucks. Tesla up one twenty seven. Google down twenty three dollars. Bed Bath Beyond up one penny. Uh, BlackBerry down four. Royal Caribbean down fifty three cents now to uh, forty nine twenty on Royal Caribbean. So under the $50 mark on Royal Caribbean today. Target up $272. JP Morgan down $0.84. Cents. Costco down 5 bucks. Walmart down $0.45. Cents. NVIDIA up $258. Disney 101 down $0.22. Cents. American Airlines up 2 pennies to fifteen fifty two. A far cry from where it was just a little while ago. It was at 21 not too long ago. Trying to hang on up there. Couldn't do it. Netflix 18190 up 156 a share today. Moderna down 171 to 13035. So yeah, we got selling coming in here. We're up 27 on the Dow though. And we're up to uh, we seem to be up on the other indexes. Hang on a second. We're up two on S P. NASDAQ down 4.95 right now. Um Austin, I just ordered some just ordered some caffeine free diet coke on Amazon. Never had it before. You, you didn't steer me wrong on the Canadian cheese whiz, by the way. It's interesting. Beach Boy, Larry, choose your poison, dude. Uh, <laughs> John, John Luo, John Laws, um, thumbs up 167. Good morning. We're talking about beverages this morning. Uh, you're late to the party there, Jason. Uh, Wing Commander, the Coke Light without caffeine is difficult to get hold of. Just received my shipment from Amazon. Now their shares go up, uh, could go up. You, you were welcome, Amazon show, whole shareholders. There you go. There you go. Uh, the Dow up 19 and a half points. Home Depot looks like we're up three bucks. Uh, Matterport at uh, five, up two pennies. Smart Rent up two pennies to 544. SoFi up a dime to 681.82. We're up 260 on GameStop, 91.74, once 91.75. That's where we're at right here. Not a whole lot going on. Okay. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Um, Beach Boy, Uncle Bruce, you should have a whole line of products with bagels, cheese whiz, schmear, caffeine free diet cokes. You're gonna make a killing on this stuff, Duncan. I'm looking at an apple. Did we get bad numbers? Uh, Splare, somehow I have a feeling we will hit 720 at SoFi and 18 1182 on NASDAQ at least today. Uh, uh what do we got here nick um caffeine free diet coke about to save the market um michael a dozen diet coke have aspartame in it is that stuff's no good isn't it said uncle bruce we use soda stream uh there you go michael that stuff is no good there you go okay dow's up 37 points that's it right there that's what is up today the dow 37 point gain right now 42 now um we got S and P up five, Nasdaq up one. So we, we got virtually nothing happening here on this this line. We're just kind of hanging around at the moment. Um, uh, the Savior says the other day I asked for Pepsi free. The shop owner said if I wanted Pepsi, I had to pay for it. Man, it's like you're caught in a time warp somewhere, buddy. Adventures with Duncan. Hi there, Splair TV. Austin, Michael, did you write another option on SoFi? Uh, he wants to know. Thirty three point gain on the Dow. There you go, ninety-two dollars on GameStop, up two eighty-five. SoFi at six eighty-three. Right now, looks like we're up eleven cents. Splare, good morning, Duncan. How you doing? There you go, kids. This is where we're at right now on this market. Mm, watching what's happening here. Twenty-two point nine point gain on the Dow Jones. Matterport five oh two now, up four. GameStop under 92 again to 91.70. There you go. 
All right, there it is. There it is. There it is. Oh, my, 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 my. Got my big ass iPad acting up on me now, asking me all kinds of questions about cookie preferences and stuff. Doesn't that drive you nuts? Do you guys get that all the time? I get that all the time. It just it just doesn't it just doesn't work anymore. It just wants to keep asking me, how do you want me to work for you? I'm just going, just give me the quotes and shut up. I mean leave me alone. I got a page. Don't give me any more stuff. It's crazy. I don't know. Is anyone else writing Apple? Um Duncan wants to know. Michael. Awesome. I bought 500 more shares, though. Uh, deep value investing, number 154 for thumbs up. Mirko wrote the uh, two um, ARKK strike 42 June 17s again at 249. Already back to two bucks on that thing. How about that? Uh, Austin, Michael, uh, nice. Five more contracts to write on. FL, a whole bunch of nothing happening here. Malo bought 100 more Rocket Lab at 429 now on 500 shares. Average is 1093. Gaiotti. Uh, uh, as a kid, uh, I used to deal drugs to make money. People would always ask for Coke, and I would reply, is Pepsi okay? Uh -huh. They usually didn't laugh, and I was stabbed. <laughs> You're dealing with the wrong kind of customers. Uh, you, you know, you need to deal with high-enders. Uh, they'll, they'll give you hugs and kisses and money. You don't want to deal with guys who will stab you. You deal with the wrong crowd. Uh, Beach Boy, just ask for milk with the cookies. There you go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh my god look if you're going to be a drug dealer don't be a drug dealer to the poor uh they can't pay you got to be a drug dealer to the rich i mean you, you got you got to you got to establish a high demographic clientele to get through this world uh that only makes sense uh, hugs and kisses sign me up Oh, no, 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 no. We're up uh, 36 to 40 points on the Dow right now. Uh, Home Depot only up a buck 50 to 289.42. Uh, 504 in Matterport up seven. Smart Rent 549 up seven cents. SoFi 688 up 16. GameStop 9176 up 260 a share. This is wise advice, Bruce. I hadn't thought of that. FL make house calls, my friend Oscar. Laughing out loud, Carol is smiling. W. Walters, uh, Duncan, Duncan, what? okay. Uh, laughing out loud, Zed, Gowdy, that was too funny. There you go. Yeah, deal with the very deal with wealthy people. They they tip better. It's no skin off their nose to give you a hundred dollar tip. Deal with deal with wealthy people. Uh I don't know how much easier I can make it. We're up forty seven points now on the down. Climbing a little more, just a little more, up 9.9 .9 in S&P and up 30 points on NASDAQ. So we got the, we got the market kind of going the right direction uh, here and there. We'll take that. 92.11 now on GameStop, up 296, a little better there too. Okay. Hmm. Airbnb hosts use income from the platform to pay for food, rent, and mortgages. That, those, that's a headline. Uh, that makes sense to me. I mean, if you're making money from your apartment, condo, whatever, you're going to use the money on life's needs. It makes sense to me. Uh, yeah, I, I can get I can get into that. Whoa, man! Oh gosh. Bruce is hanging on here. W. Walters, uh, Duncan, I'm waiting to write on Apple. That's what I'm doing. I'm waiting to write. Uh, Apple right now is, uh, let's see, what is it doing here? Uh, down a dollar to 139.28. Now, if Apple wants to go up to 143.44, you could look at writing 145s to 150s. Two, three, four, five weeks out, bring in some premiums. And wants to come back a bit, they'll buy them back. Say thank you, sir. May I have another? Absolutely. We're down 70 on IBM. We're down 49 cents on Microsoft. Down 98 on Apple. Down a buck 60 on Goldman. So we have some negativity there. Nothing dramatic. We're up 24 on the Dow. We're also up on S and P. We're up on Nasdaq. So the these stocks that are off a little bit are off fractionally. 
Um, Oscar, Uncle Bruce, when the stocks go down, and I think it's the bottom, I like to sell to open co uh, option puts. It's just a good strategy. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that strategy. If you're writing, you know, out of the money puts and bringing in a premium to do it, you're being paid a, a, a premium uh, with a nice low strike price. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You see a bit of a recovery in the markets. Buy back the puts for a discount. Say, thank you, sir. May I have another? You can play that game all day long, of course. Mirko, see you later, gang. Don't drink and drive or do any drugs. Bad for your health, but it's a lot of fun. Duncan, hold off, Walter. Uh, Michael, uh, I used to go and do, I used to do drugs. I, I still do, but I also used to, uh, just so you know. Um, but a lot of fun, says Splair. Have a good one there, Mirko. Oscar, thanks. Uh, good advice. Good, Very good advice. There you are. There's where we're at. Cheers, everybody, from around the world here from Amsterdam. Drinking Coke Zero rather than Diet Coke. It is what it is. We're doing what we got to do. The Dow up seven points. SP up four. NASDAQ up 18. That's what we got going on right now. All righty then. Thank you all for being here today. I appreciate it very much. Mm, mm, mm. Pew, pew, pew. 689 on the SoFi, trying to get back to 690. Can we get the 7 on SoFi today? We've had it already. Let's see if we can get it again. 92 on GameStop, up 290, trying to get higher. Don't know. Dow's up 16 points. I don't know. I just don't know. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. Brit, Brit, Beach Boy says, now that uh, Bruce Willis has quit acting, Coyote will star in Die Hard 5.55 Yippee Kaye Simpletons. Michael is saying, hell yeah, Duncan, uh, lots of flippers right now on the Apple shares. I'm sure it is. FL, time to look at my GameStop position more closely. Does anyone know when we will find out what the split will be? Might need to add or sell some of these to get closer to the to a nice even number after the split. Well, between five and seven to one is what I keep hearing about. See the one or the other. Uh, Alberto, my buddy, says, Duncan, um, Alberto, eventually... Adventures make some moolah. Uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Nick is saying uh, SoFi is going for seven again. Going at 692 right now. Let's go. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, Austin, how does Spire go public for 10 bucks and now sit at 130? Is that not insanity? I agree. It is crazy. Let's go. Uh, anything under five bucks is ridiculous, uh, but it's the market. This is the welcome to the stock market, kids. Uh, sometimes it has no rhyme, no reason. It does crazy stuff. The 10 year treasury, 2.7, uh, just ahead of the minutes coming out. Uh, amazing how this market reacts to just all kinds of stuff. Anyway, there it is. All righty. Folks, I'm going to take a little break right now. Uh, I'm going to leave it to you. Uh, keep an eye on this market. I'm going to catch you this afternoon with an hour to go or so, and we'll watch it together and we'll shut it down. Uh, I'm going to get a little rest in here and consult with Jennifer on what she's got plotted for me here in Amsterdam. But uh, thank you all. I hope you uh, make some money today. Keep your eyes on these stocks and look for your option opportunities, whether you're buying them back or writing new ones. And we'll catch up with you a little bit later on today. Um, and uh, there you go. Um, Mm, interesting. John it says, SoFi 2022 annual meeting, Tuesday, July 12th, 10 o'clock. So it'll be a Zoom kind of thing. Are you going to that red light district, Uncle Bruce? Uh, see Uncle Bruce from Nick. John, thanks, everybody. Oh, no, I don't think so. I, th I think I'm going to go right over here. You see this lo See this thing right over here, this, uh, this location here? There's that. There's a pillow over there. You see it? I think I'm going to be in that neighborhood here in, the, in a not-too-distant future, just getting some more shut-eye. Um, why don't you just leave the chat open, please? Um, Larry, enjoy Amsterdam. Thanks, Larry.
appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Uncle Bruce. Thank you, Oscar. Uh, Goody, adding that to my calendar. Thanks, as uh, Goody to John. Thank you all for your uh, continued support of this channel. Th thanks for the thumbs ups. We'll see you this afternoon, three o'clock Eastern, final hour of the day. That'll be nine to ten o'clock tonight, my time. We'll be with you. In the meantime, take care, everybody, and uh, make some money out there. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.